everyone. Welcome to Canva Tip Weekly. I've got a really fun one and research-based one for you this week. Thank you to everyone in my newsletter who took my Let's Go Canva form. Um, particularly thank you to this person who said if it were content created by Olivia, I would consume it in any of these forms. You're my favorite human being. I'm sure I can go through the responses and see who it is. So I had 66 people take this so far. Amazing. I'm going to leave it up if you are a YouTube only person and you don't subscribe to my newsletter and you feel like taking it. Uh, so this is where I mostly wanted to see. Please check the items where you struggle the most when using Canva. And obviously there's two really big winners here and both of them surprised me. The first one was actually using all the tools offered in Canva. I am truly surprised by that one because I hate tools. I'm just kidding. I love tools. I love tools. Uh... But I would wager that most of you are and most of you think you're not using all the tools when really it's that you don't have enough brand pieces to use on Canva. That's my hunch. So I'm going to show you a few things today. That's why the title of this video is five essential tools you might not be using correctly in Canva. Um, the second one is keeping my Canva organized. I'm surprised by this one as well. because I do try to show you guys folders every single video and by golly, we're going to do it again. We're, we're going to folder it up again today. I'm going to show you my folder structure, I'm going to walk you through how I keep my Canva pretty organized, and it's in a couple of different ways. Let's get into it. Stick around to the end of the video, I would love to show everyone who is a data nerd um, my click-through rate on my email. I use Flowdesk, uh, I'm going to put my referral link in the chat. Um, I use Flowdesk. Um, across my YouTube in this form because 66 people is kind of a lot, but it's also kind of not a lot because my email newsletter list is, I believe, 1286 people strong. So we'll take a little peek at that. But first, let's get into the heart of the video. So I've already made this quick page using some of the things that I want to talk about. And the first thing is folders. <laughs> folders, yeah. So Folders in Canva are going to be insanely, insanely important. And a lot of you have said, Olivia, the folder structure is just so complicated. You have to make a folder and put things into it. Please tell me how that is different from your computer. Please comment below and tell me how that is different from, because on your computer, you have to do the same thing. If you use any sort of computer, and I'm not a PC person, maybe PC does it differently, but on a Mac, I have to be the one to make my folders when I create a document, I save that document into a folder. When I download something, I save it into that folder. So Canva works the same way, maybe a little bit less intuitively with where the panels go because of course when you create a design, you don't save it, it just starts. But I'm going to show you how I do things. So first, when you click create a design, no matter what it is, I want you to go ahead and before you even start designing, there's two really big things that need to happen. The first thing is you need to give this a thoughtful title. This is an IG story. Mm -mm. That ain't us. Nope. Give it some sort of label. Is it Q1? So I typically do my things in quarters, so we're about to be in Q2. So I'm going to do Q2 2023 Instagram stories. That's going to be it. So that way I can easily find the date. I can easily find everything. Next, I'm going to go ahead and do file, save to folder. I have a folder called your, uh, let me go a little slower. Uh, save to folder. You're going to see recent, which is kind of a recent development, but I have all my team members in here. So that would be a nightmare for me. So I'm just going to go to all, or you can search your folders. So I'm going to type in social. Uh, let's go social. There we go. Did it. Done it. Save. So now this is saved. This is good. This is a document where I know I can find it later and easily access it later. Go ahead and just get into the habit of saving literally everything you do. If you don't, occasionally try to get into the habit of coming over here and highlighting a few things, right? So this bad boy right here under move to folder, this should also be on let's go social. So I'm going to save that right there. And now that that's on my uh, recents, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to find. Next up, try to star folders so that you can quickly get to them over here. So anytime I need to do something for social media, I click let's go social and then I click on this is the carousel that I've been working on. And then here you can see I'm sort of doing my own advice. Reels covers 2023. It's very easy for me to do that. Use your folders. Use folders. This is what mine looks like. Let's go social. Let's go brand. Here's all my brand files. My terrazzo. My brand patterns. My icon suite. My brand headshots. Stop using your uploads folder. Mm-mm. 
it's not us. Upload everything into a little folder, right? Because then when you're here, this is a new update, Canva update alert, Canva update alert, Canva update alert. This is a new update. When you're here and I click on Let's Go Brand, notice, watch, watch my eye over here, watch this. When I click Terrazzo, don't look at my cursor, look over here, look at Let's Go Brand. When I click at Terrazzo, notice how Canva has now changed that. We are now inside of a different folder. So it gets a little confusing. It gets to be a, li a little confusing over there. So now I hit this back button to go back to Let's Go Brand and this changes over. So it's gonna be a little bit different in finding your um, items, but you can see how organized this is. Terrazzo, great, now I can put my Terrazzo that I use everywhere on this page and we're all gonna have a real good time. Yay. Okay, the second thing um, is I wanna walk us through some tools. A client hit me with this this past week or so and I was like, I didn't know it was not common knowledge. So I just wanna give you a quick tool run through of a page and how to organize pages. So first of all, you can lock things. So if you're like, oh, I just can't grab stuff, you can click, you can lock a page, only allow replacing content or lock it completely. But you can also lock individual elements uh, by right clicking on it, right click lock. So then I can lock that where I'm not gonna accidentally grab it or do anything over it. There's a couple of things in this, uh, they've moved a couple of things over here. You can now align things this way easier, arrange things, bring forward, bring backward, link, lock, comment. There's a couple of things hidden behind the right click menu bar. Additionally, this little sneaky guy down here, this little sneaky guy right here, I did not know that a lot of you did not know this was a thing, but when you click on it, you can see the grid view of your whole document. I use this constant. If this didn't exist, I probably would not use Canva. I'm not joking. I am not joking when I say if this grid view was not here, I probably would not use Canva. So there's that. You can hit the plus sign to make a new page, trash the page, dupli uh, duplicate the page, lock the page, reorder the page. Um, you've got a lot of stuff up here. You can also zoom in and out, although I just use uh, command plus and minus or control plus and minus. You can go into presenter mode. There are notes, which sometimes I do use if I want to talk to internal team members. And then you can hit this little up button right here if you prefer to see your pages this way, but I think this is a disaster, so I usually, it distracts me. If you do this way, then this is just on single pages like this, but if you hit the down button right here, then it's in a long scrolly page like this. Okay, so number one was your folders. Number two was making sure you're using all of the tools here on the page. Number three is rulers. Rulers, because what's interesting is that a lot of you said making documents, lead magnets, larger things, and then over here on templates, a lot of you said workbooks, larger carousels, presentate long form PDF proposal. A lot of you said that. So when I do large document design, don't forget to add your rulers, which is going to create a really clean streamlined look. So you come up here to file. They moved this under view settings, show rulers and guides. You're now going to get a handy dandy ruler right here, which mine's in pixels right now because this document is in pixels. I can change it to inches. I believe, yeah, and then that changed to inches over here and then it made it mad. Uh, so usually, file, view settings, show rulers and guides. From over here, you can drag, we're gonna do 1.5, and yes, a lot of you complained in the what do you not like about Canva, the fact that this doesn't just snap to normal human being numbers, like what is 1.3, what, what, why can't I just go to 1.5, Canva? If you watch my videos, <laughs> you don't, let's fix that. Um, so usually what I do is not that. Usually I create, I use this and I'm like, okay, that looks good. We're going to move that little block over here. And then to make sure it's the same on the other side, I move my little block over here. Bah, bah, bah. But this applies to every page in Canva. So then when I click on this page, the same guides are there. When I come down, look, the same guides are all over these pages. Super clean and easy to use. Um, so the first thing was folders. The second thing was making sure you're using everything in the pages. Grids and guides are going to help you so much. So view settings, rulers and guides, we've got that. Margins and print bleed, you guys don't really need unless you're doing print work, obviously. Margins are going to be um, how much of a distance that you, it's a safe zone where like the paper might fold. And then if we go to file, 
view settings and show print bleed, I believe that adds like 0.25 um, around to the edge and that would get cut off under traditional printer. So we don't need that. Next up, this got moved and something that's really helpful when designing is the styles and the paintbrush. So the paintbrush got moved. It's no longer up here and it's now on a right click. So if you right click, here it is, copy style. So I can copy the style of this object and click on the next thing, paste. So now these flowers are all, are all one color, cool. I can also click on text, right click, copy style, click on that. It has now copied the size, the font, the everything about that. You can also do this on images. So if this image is uh, really, really bright, contrasty, saturation, uh, just all of the above, you can right click, oh, right click, copy style, click on that, and it will make the next thing you click on the same. So it works across, the, the paintbrush tool works across elements, photos, and text. Yay. Hopefully that helped you if you're like, why is the paintbrush gone, which I use it very heavily. The next thing you might have noticed is missing is the styles panel. <sighs> Make myself smaller. So if I want this whole page to be Let's Go Studio if I, there used to be a styles panel over here. They have since moved it. You now have to click on design up here in the top left and styles. So it's templates and styles. Uh, so now watch over here when I click on my brand fonts, it will change everything here to my brand fonts. And then if I click on my color palette and then keep clicking on it, I can shuffle until I like the color palette that's on screen. So that is now how you apply. And then don't forget, once you like something down here at the bottom, apply to all pages. Once you do that, it's going to apply to the other entire rest of the document. So next up, a lot of you did not answer this and I don't care because I know this is one of those things where I, I see what you're saying, but I'm listening to what you're saying and what you're saying, how hard it is to search, how hard it is to, yeah, I know. Um, I wish we could do these things. Uh, the lack of organization, how to get better templates, all the templates that you guys need. It's due to not having a robust enough brand library. I see it all the time. You have a logo, you have two hex colors, that does not a brand make. So you want to start building a library as much as possible. So when you come over here to, for example, um, photos, which are somewhere, I don't know where, oh, I was just missing it, it's right here, photos. So let's say you love one of these images, um, for example, this one. And you're like, this I love for my brand, I want to keep using it, let's do a couple of things. The first thing is that you need to click on this little eyeball, whether you right click, no, just kidding. Um, it's the eyeball up here. Info. You're going to see a lot happening and this is so crucial and not enough people use this. Uh, info. You can star it and find it in your starred items. You can add it to a folder and by golly, that is so powerful. You can add this photo to a folder. So you can come over here to let's go brand. Let's go brand and then come over to my um, stock right here, and then my team will be able to use this photo. Move to folder. First huge thing. But hey, Olivia, we want more consistency. So let's click on that info again. There's two things you can do. The first of all, you can click view more by Jade Stevens. So it looks like this person has created a ton of stuff for Canva, and they're all going to be in a similar style. Look at that, a very similar style. If you keep scrolling down, you're going to see Similar style, similar lighting. You're going to be able to find what this particular artist has done for Canva and then start to add all of these photos to a library. The next thing when you click on the info button is see more like this. See more like this. We're going to click on that bad boy. Bad example. Canva has decided to give us a bunch of really random things here. Uh, this one's not bad. I guess if you work for like a hotel chain or mom and baby. Oh, and that actually is Cora Lenz Tatiana Nekrasova. So we're going to click see more like this. Look at this. Tons. And actually, here's a whole other one. Here are two more with the same models that have different views. 
that's how you're going to build your brand libraries is start making connections and start saving things start saving them starring them add to folder get curious start building brand libraries so to recap the tools that i really think are really crucial with canva is using those folders correctly um, using all of the elements around here, like your grid, zooming in and out, knowing how to lock items, use pages. Number three, those rulers. Look at how these rulers are in here. Uh, number four, using your styles and your paintbrush to style entire documents. And then number five, starting to build, use Canva's tools available. Canva actually does have really, really great photos. They have really cool stuff in here. All this trending, like these are gorgeous beautiful photos that are gonna work are you kidding look at how gorgeous that's perfect i might use that on like a blog post thumbnail something use especially if you're paying for canva pro all of these are yours to use gorgeous all of these are yours to use if you are on canva you just have to start saving them to folders all right guys that was five tips in canva please comment below with what you'd like to see next if you're still hanging around if you're like ooh. I kind of want to see more stuff. I want to show you a little journey because I'm a numbers person and you might be also. So first of all, my email newsletter is at 1286 people, which I'm proud of. I know it's not thousands of thousands, but I do foster it really silly. I do no promotion. I maybe post on my story once every now and again. I do have a pop-up that appears in my website that I do otherwise little to no promotion on Canva Tip Weekly. So I'm pretty good with that. My open rate is over 50% usually, which again is a really, really great number. I'm really proud of that. My click rate's a little low. I prefer for it to be at 10%, but that's still a pretty strong click rate. So of the 1,200 people that I sent this to, my open rate, oh my good heavens. Oh no. 666 people opened this and I had 66 fill out the form. Okay. All right. And then a 7.6 uh, click rate, uh, which is pretty good. And then that means that 98 people clicked on that email. And so then of those 90 people that clicked on the email, 66 of them did it. So like 30 people were like, no, <laughs> no, it's too long for me to fill out. I respect that. I respect that. Uh, but that's pretty good. So I'm, I'm really excited by that. Now, my YouTube tells a different story because I only get about 100-ish views on each video. Sometimes they creep up. Sometimes if they're really big ones, like this one, this seamless repeating pattern, just hit the right note. If it's a trend, this one has almost 10,000. Sometimes they're bigger. Um, I don't really care. I think that the people, the 100 people that watch these, they're a very dedicated 100. One of you responds to me almost every every time. I get a newsletter response, I get an Instagram, or I get a YouTube comment, and that's enough for me. If I'm helping one or two people, that is plenty. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing any sort of SEO. I'm literally recording these, giving them to my virtual assistant, and then just calling it a day. So I think if I pushed a little more, but it's not part of my thing right now. Um, so thanks so much to everyone. Oh, and I'm almost approaching a thousand subscribers. So I guess if I <laughs> really tried and maybe I will, um, but it's pollen season. Who has the time? Um, thank you so much for following along. Um, I am planning, I know I said, I've said this every YouTube video, but I am planning very much on covering docs, covering websites. There's a new bulk bulk. Um, where is it? The bulk uploader. The text to image I want to start tinkering around with. Um, I'm really excited about some of the features. I just need the time to sit down and do them. And it was a very busy season. So please comment with notes of things that you'd like to learn. And thanks so much.